Yo! Oh my God. In college hoops, it's the wild, wild west. This fan racially abused Asian students at a Northwestern University basketball game, which got him booted. In, in reference uh, to what I said, uh, I made an awful mistake. Creighton head coach Greg McDermott once told his players, guys, we got to stick together. We need both feet in. I need everybody to stay on the plantation. I can't have anybody leave the plantation. He would be suspended. Former Penn State basketball coach Pat Chambers told former player Rasir Bolton, I want to be a stress reliever for you. You can talk to me about anything. I need to get some of this pressure off you. I want to loosen the noose that's around your neck. Bolton would leave the program. Danny Casper, seen here, coached Texas State until he told his black players to chase that chicken. And if they didn't exceed a 2.2 GPA, he said they would end up working at Popeye's. He has yet to receive another offer being a head coach. Jim Hayford would resign in disgrace after serving as head coach of Seattle University's basketball program. Sources revealed he used a racial slur during a scrimmage. Longtime College Hoops reporter Jeff Goodman found this would occur more than once with Hayford. And now we have another name to add to the list. Texas Tech head coach Mark Adams. Adams, who previously served as an assistant before becoming head coach with the Red Raiders, encouraged a player to be more receptive to coaching and reference Bible verses about workers, teachers, parents, and slaves serving their masters, the school said. His defense was the following. The comments he made were not racist because it's in the Bible. And scripture is fine to quote even if it involves a player serving as a slave to his master. Adams would then double down. One of my coaches said it bothered the player. I explained to them I didn't apologize. Kirby Hoka, the athletic director at Texas Tech, issued Adams a written reprimand, but then made the decision to suspend the coach to conduct a more thorough inquiry of Adams' interactions with his players and staff. This would not be all for Adams, though. The school is also looking into another incident in which Adams allegedly spat on a player per stadium. Adams told Stadium he had sought medical treatment for a bad cough, and the incident occurred during a game. I can spit on you whenever I want to, one person close to the situation said Adams told the player. Adams said he didn't recall the matter. So his excuse then was the following. Adams told Stadium he had gone to the doctor, had a bad cough, and slobbered on the player during the game. Now here is what every administration does when a coach or a member of the coaching staff has something occur like this, something that's in a negative light. It is the cost benefit of doing business. Do you keep this person on or do you make them go bye-bye and pay them? Here's what ESPN reports. If Adams were to be fired without cause, he would be owed 60% of what is remaining on his contract, more than $7 million. This comes off Adams signing an extension last spring that pays him $15.5 million over five years. The team, by the way, not great. They are 5-13 and 13 in conference play. They open up conference play against Bob Huggins and West Virginia. Defectors Tom Lay would write, The mind of a coach is an incredible thing. There are few fortresses of self-absorption sturdy enough to produce thoughts like, it's actually not racist to use a slave master analogy when coaching college basketball, and how can you get mad at me for spitting on someone when I was sick? In such quick succession, this man's brain should be studied for science. 